All right. I mean, do you, do you want mine, one? bud? It, yeah. It has okay. notes on it. I don't it. want you to could, take it from you. You if could you're ignore gonna it. Use it. <laughs> I got the wrong one. I, I might okay. have an extra one. It's, it's Otherwise, okay. John. You can take yeah. it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Otherwise, bring it back next week. They're all online. <laughs> you can download all of them, too. Oh, then I, okay. I'll be fine then. Okay. I didn't know that. So, and the video's there, too, if you want to watch it. See oh, I didn't want to hear about watching videos. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to find it. Is, is Mike online? Uh, somebody just came on. Oh, okay. So, it could be. So, <laughs> let's open with prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We don't deserve your love, and yet you love us anyway. You sent your son to pay for our sins. You responded to our sin um, by... A, assuring us of forgiveness and so we ask that you always open our eyes uh, to the reality of sin but also the reality of your love we pray in jesus name amen, amen. Mm-hmm. all right um so just a couple things first of all for the benefit of those watching online either currently or in the future um we are going to uh anybody that's, that's seeing this on youtube or, or on Ustream later on after the fact um this is going to be uh, we do this every uh, or most Sunday nights at 7 o'clock Eastern. If you'd like to uh, join us live, uh, you can just go to shepherdtherich.org, um, find a Genesis study, and it's there. Um, also, uh, if we ran it, we've, there's the, you can use the, um, the chat box there, uh, but it has a limited number of characters. Uh, it's like 109 characters, I think. Um, uh, or you can use uh, Twitter. Uh, you SOTR Genesis mm-hmm. is the hashtag, um, or you can just if you go. That's why I can't find. This is for the benefit of those watching. Um, <laughs> Today I'll be all right, you can also whether you're watching this live um, or uh, or watching it after the fact, you can leave a comment um, either on um, on YouTube or wherever you're watching this, or you can go to the shepherdtheridge.org, find the study. Um, that that we're talking about and post comments there. If you're watching this live, if you want to post a longer comment, if you use the comment box on the website, um, find this study, leave a comment there. Uh, I'll be watching. I get I'll get an update on my phone and and I'll keep an eye open for comments there. And um, so so we'll see those comments, or you can post a comment there and then use our chat box and say check the comments or something like that. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, we are looking at Genesis chapter <clears throat> 2, 25 through 324. Someone like to start reading? <clears throat> the man and his wife were both <clears throat> naked, and they felt no shame. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of <clears throat> the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat? From any tree in the garden the woman said to the serpent we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is <coughs> in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die you surely you will not surely die the serpent said to the woman for God knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be opened and your, you will be like God, knowing God and evil. Then the woman saw that the fruit of the trees was good for food and ple- pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked naked so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in a cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden but the Lord God called to the man where are you he answered I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked so I hid and he said who told you that you were naked have you eaten from the tree that I have commanded you not to eat from the man said the woman you put here with me she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it 
Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serp serpent deceived me, and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, mm -hmm. and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put en enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain you will give birth to the t two children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you listened to the, your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful p toil you will eat, eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. From For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve, because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin, for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and life and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Alright. <coughs> so, <coughs> Genesis 2.25. Instead of starting with the first verse of chapter 3, I, I decided, to, decided to draw the line uh, separately from where the line was previously drawn. Um, Alright. They were naked and unashamed. Does this mean the Bible promotes nudism? In other words, What's nudism? The like, um, the belief that that uh, the naked body is natural, and so therefore we shouldn't cover it. So you have like nude beaches. I would say like that, that before verse twenty-five, yes. Okay. So, yeah, before sin, they had nothing to be ashamed of. Right. Okay? Problem is, we don't live in a sinless world anymore. And um, so those who, who hold to that and, and use the Bible as their, as their basis, um, then you say, um, nope, you've got to read the rest of the chapter. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <clears throat> You really threw me for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm saying no to this question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, has the devil ever has the devil ever asked you, did God really say? Maybe not literally, you know, snake and you know. But um yeah. Have you ever found yourself sort of I've avoided God. Okay. <clears throat> Didn't pray about a situation. All right. I have said. I got. I got. <laughs> we had some Baptist friends, and one of our Baptist friends hmm. became a minister, and we went to Baptist church for a while. And I got to tell you, I say that two or three times to every Baptist service, because they always say, and God said, and they rattle something off so quick, and I'm thinking. Remember, and before I can even say, I don't remember God saying that. They're onto something else. Okay. So I've said that a lot. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's if a little that's different. That's what you mean. No, that's all. Well, that's not. I <laughs> okay. mean, that's a, that's actually a good way to ask it. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
say, well, I mean, did he? And like in sort of honest inquiry, okay. Um, but what this is, is God says something and he makes it pretty clear, okay. And the devil comes along and goes, okay, but there's a loophole here, right? Oh, yeah. Right. So that's, that's kind of what we're talking about here is, is this idea that, well, there's a loophole. You know, well, you can get around it. It's not really sin if you, you know, kind of look at it from another angle or, you know. I mean, I see this with, um, I see this with, with all kinds of, um, oh, what's a good example? All right. Uh, a real sort of innocent seeming example you you get the you go to the store and you get your change and you walk out and you realize that they gave you too much change right well the bible says don't steal i'm not stealing it they gave it to me <laughs> <coughs> so it's not really stealing you know the sort of trying to justify because I really don't want to go back and, and give them the money because, hey, this is a bonus and I could use the money. Right. Would that also apply to the Mormon guy I saw years ago on Phil Donahue who said the scripture says that every man will have seven wives? Not familiar with that one. <laughs> well, it's in the Old Testament and it does say that. But that's one little sentence out of the whole uh, chapter that talks about what God was saying was that there was going to be so much death and destruction, I don't remember the oh, reasoning, okay. that there would be that many men that had been killed. That were killed, and so and it was so, actually a curse. Yeah, and I, I mean that, that there would be that many women for each man. I got and six so more to go. Yeah, well, here's the thing is, is the idea win. here, though, is that, is that a lot of guys have to get killed first. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so, 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 yes. He's got to kill me first. Right? It, it's in there. God and did say that. I guess, but that's not asking, did God really say? Yeah, this is this is more just sort of trying to justify sin. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not really, you know, and um, you look at... And I know people that are uh, living together and they're not married, or just having sex and they're not married. Okay, and they, well, we're not committing adultery because neither one of us is married. And adultery is when you're um, with somebody else's spouse. But since neither one of us is married, we're okay. That's a good good point. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> nah, that's a good um, one. You know I don't that, think that works. That doesn't fly. Um, but it's you know trying to justify it, and um, and I thought there's there's plenty of times where it would be more convenient for me if God hadn't said that, <laughs> but He did, and you know um, and you know you get into issues in the church about like women pastors, all right? Good example, okay? It would be a lot more convenient when you get into these discussions if God hadn't said the things that He did say about the role of women in the church. And while some of it's a little bit vague and we're not exactly sure where that line is and stuff like that, um, you know, there's definitely a line there. And, um, and and so, you know, it would be more convenient to have left those passages out. In fact, we had that, that um, passage was one of the readings about a month or so ago um, about women should remain silent in the church. You know, interesting thing, we use a different set of pericopes than what the ELCA uses. And they don't use that reading anywhere in their um, in their readings in the whole three years of readings. That one's just skipped. <laughs> it's convenient if you know if God hadn't said that, but if you're not reading it, it's still there. Um, so, you know, and mm, I'm in trouble. All right, but you know, on the other hand, lest I you know sit and, and poke fingers at them, you know, he also said said speak the truth in love and and. You know, in in the Missouri Synod, we're really good at speaking the truth, but not so much in love, um, when it comes to dealing with with other churches. And <clears throat> so, you know, we we got to be kind of slow to point the finger there. Um, so it would be more convenient if if he had just said, you know, the truth is it, and and you don't have to love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> 
So why do you think Eve said in chapter 2, verse 3, that they must not touch the tree of knowledge and good and of tree of knowledge of good and evil. I know because God didn't say that. Mm -hmm. So why do you think she said don't even touch it? God just said don't eat it. She didn't get it firsthand. Okay. She got it from Adam and he might have messed up the She's playing telephone? Or like maybe Adam said, All right, Eve, here's the deal. Don't God touch said that. don't eat it. So seriously just don't touch it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Any knew her well. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't, you know. That's what. That's the only thing I can think of. So you, you know, you tell your kids, don't, don't play with matches. You know, don't, don't touch it. Don't, you know, we can put it up on the shelf or, or whatever. Okay. Um. So what did where where does where is it that God told them not to? Yeah. Okay. You know, that's what I was looking for. Right. I wanted to know the exact word. What he said. Well. Right. <clears throat> oh, no. No, no. It's that's what you have here. Oh. What? Okay, oh, here. it's um, in uh, chapter 2, verse 16. Uh, yeah, 16. The Lord commanded the man, You're free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. And then right after that, he created Eve. Well, after that, there was this whole, like, beast of the field and all that kind of stuff. And then he created Eve. So but, we're assuming that Adam told. Yeah, Eve. Adam passed it on. All right, so it could and have Eve been. Eve is talking to the serpent. Right. She said that. So Eve didn't hear it straight from God. Eve heard it from Adam. Okay. So at that point, that makes it easier for the devil. Well, did God really say? You know? Yeah, you, know, you could say, well, my pastor said I shouldn't do this. But I didn't hear it straight from God. <laughs> it's easier if you don't read your Bible. Then you can say, well, I didn't know. <laughs> Except mm -hmm. you can't plead ignorance with God either because he says, you know, I, I did but give But he gives a reason for it. The, the serpent gives a reason for telling her that because he's, he, he's saying that God is being deceitful. God is yeah. doesn't want you to know what he knows. Right, yeah. Know? Yeah, you know, and, and that's what he's doing. He's, he's going, hey, God's got this great thing, and mm -hmm. he doesn't want you to have it. That's right. Well, and the interesting thing of it is, though, in verse 5 of 3, it says, For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God. And God said, Let us make man in our mm -hmm. image. <clears throat> So somewhere along the line, there was another disconnect because Eve didn't realize that. I don't know if Adam did, right. that yeah. he was created in God's image, but I'm not, I don't think Eve was. You know, they, one thing to understand is God may have also said that, you know, we don't have the whole story. You know, we've got, we've got sort of the synopsis, right? There was time that passed, all right? And, and we get the indication that Adam and Eve had a really close relationship with God, mm -hmm. that they were able to just chat, mm -hmm. okay? And, um, and, and so, you know, what other conversation went on, we don't know. All we have is kind of the basics here. Who was he talking to? Who? God. Oh, let us make man in our image? Yeah, when he says those things, who's he talking to? The Trinity. Okay. I'm sorry, it just sounded weird. Who? who? Yeah, I know, no, doesn't it? We see, we talked about that last time. That's what you missed. Yeah, I missed. Yep. Yeah, I was washed flat on my back. Hey, but it's a really good question. <laughs> it's an important question to ask. Oh, okay. Them. And Absolutely. were there also other beings in heaven, like a court or angels? Well, sometimes that's argued, but since he said in our image, we weren't created in the image oh, of the angels. Okay, I get it. And so, mm -hmm. Thank it, you. you know, then I would say that he wasn't talking to the angels. Talking to. Um. So, so yeah, he don't even touch it. And so was this, yeah. What you know? Why did she say don't even touch it? Could be because she was sort of passing on what she had heard from Adam, or, or it was you're sort of getting her perspective. I mean, what we do get here is this sense of like, this is really. I'm not even supposed to. That's I got to stay away from that. Um, you know, this is this is off limits. Um, 
and maybe she was trying real hard not to let right. that. Right, yeah. Know, so and, and see, now some people see this, oh, see, she was twisting the word of God. But you know what always bothered me before, even before we started doing this is, how big of a thing could that have been? I mean, they had it made. All you have to do is not eat the stupid apple. Right, right. I mean, this <laughs> serpent must have been one heck of a salesperson. Because, <laughs> well, you know, he was, you can eat of any <laughs> tree of the garden. Be? You know? It's like, they've got all this different fruit. It's all great. It's just grown there. You just go pick it. You eat it. You, you Everything's just... I often just thought about that. Peachy. We do it all the time. But, I mean, look at, we have freedom, we have a roof over our head, we have enough food to eat, and still, we have no trouble sitting all the time, so yeah, yeah, I don't right. think we'd be any different than it. You know, and, and for that matter, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. you look at, you here we, in the United mm -hmm. States, we're probably the most spoiled people in the world, okay? No, the French are. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? The, you know what are what are the what are the really huge problems that that we face physically, right? Um, heart disease, cancer, um, strokes, right? These are all things that are caused. They call them rich people diseases because um, because the the main things that cause them are eating a lot of animal fat and and things like that. And that this that they don't have these kind of diseases in poor countries, um, where they don't, where they're not so able to eat, you know, meat three meals a day. Yeah, they have diseases called caused by starvation. Right. Yeah, they have a whole different very, set very of diseases, <clears throat> and it's just, you know, and and that's just that's, and you know, can a person still have some of those? problems without um you know by living a different lifestyle yeah because there's all these genetic factors and all kinds of stuff too all right but it's so rampant in our society because we do all kinds of things because we're so we've we've got all these things that are just here you go you know um so but we've got all that and yet we go oh Oh, that, um, boy, I wish I could afford to eat at that restaurant. <laughs> or, um, you know, I wish I had that car. <laughs> when other people are like, man, I wish I had a camel. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, but my car, you know. I was, we we're, were driving down the road yesterday, and this was one of these, somebody drove by in this old classic car and that. And, uh, oh, it was, it was like, it was, it was old Jaguar. And and, oh. and it was this this tiny little car and, and Teresa goes, You wouldn't fit in that, so don't even think about it, you know. <laughs> and 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 I said, Oh, I wouldn't want it anyway, because it wouldn't have an iPod dock. And, <laughs> and, 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 she, and she goes, You are so spoiled, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and but yeah, I mean you know, we're we're not satisfied right. with what we have, yeah, right. even though we've yeah, got that so car much. doesn't have heated seats. My truck See? does. <laughs> see, see. So um. And I will never have another one again that doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. So next question in three verse four, the devil says they won't die. You, you, they, you won't die, right? God said the day you eat it, you will die. Right. Now I've seen people say, look, God lied. The devil told the truth, because the day they ate it, they didn't die. Sure they did. Mm. Explain. They died spiritually. Yes. Because now they had sinned. Right. Okay. We need to understand the Bible's definition of the word death. The Bible's definition of the word death is not cessation of physical or of, of brainwave activity or something like that. Okay. We've got the sort of medical definition of death. That's not the Bible's definition of death. The Bible's definition of death is separation. It's not ending. Right. And so, so what happened here? They were separated from God. And that's way worse than the medical definition of death. So did they die that day? Yes, absolutely. In a way that's so much worse than, um, than if they had just <coughs> physically died instead.
All right. So what's wrong with wanting to be like God? And reference First John three two. Because you'll be like God. Right? God's really great. Why wouldn't you want to be like him? Well, see there, I'm kind of... I'm thinking back again to where he says, let us make man in our image. Yeah. So at that time, it was okay. Right. You're onto something there. You'll be like God. Right? What Eve should have said is... Um, I'm already like God. Right? 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 So the devil's argument had a false premise. He was saying, you'll be like God, implying... That they weren't. That they weren't. Yeah. It's like when you say, hey, bud, have you stopped beating your wife? <laughs> right? mm. What am I, you know, I'm implying something there. You're right. Mm. Okay? So so he's, he's implying something that's not true. Hmm. So there, really, there's nothing wrong with being like God. Uh, that's how we should be. Right, yeah. Right? So, someone have this first John? I did, but then I, I thought we flipped back to Genesis. <laughs> right, I, it's fine, I got it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Does this, yeah, when it says down here that then one day they saw God sauntering through the garden, does they that didn't mean see that, him. huh? They didn't see him. Oh, well, they well, heard. Well, they heard him. Well, well yeah, they heard. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll okay. get to that. Okay. okay. Um. So we will be like God. They were like God. Okay. So he says, you'll be like God. Well, I already am like God. What do you mean I'll be like God? Oh, you'll know good and evil. But see, you're a better arguer than they than she was. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I've got thousands of years of of sort of experience, not yeah. personal experience, but, you know, so <laughs> but, you know, people yeah. sort of looking at this. And, and so she was pretty naive in, in that. And, and, you know, and you can argue that. But at the same time, I'm a sinner and she wasn't. And yeah. so she had that going for her. Um, you know, I'm I'm a, as a sinner, I'm an expert. I don't need the devil to say, "Did God really say?" Man, I'll ask that question. You can do it all <laughs> on your own. I don't. You know, oh. I I don't need somebody else coming and whispering that in my ear. <laughs> um, but she so, didn't know she was not. I don't know. Well, yeah. she should have known. She should have known that. That's right. I'm right? thinking. That's not right. So, hmm. but, yeah, I, I don't know what her problem was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Right? So, but to be like God, you know, what we have, what we see in this, let us make man in our image, right? This kind of the Trinity, this, this close relationship that God has with the, the different persons of the Trinity. And we will be like God because we will see him as he is, all right? That again is this this close personal relationship with God, right? So they already had that, and so to say you'll be like God, no, you'll you won't be like God anymore, all right? So that was a lie. It was you know it was ha oh yeah you'll know what good and evil are, all right? They already had some sense of that given the fact that God said don't do it, so they knew what was good and they <clears throat> knew that if we do that that'll be evil, you know, or they should have. Um, Right? So, next question. What kind of fruit was it? Forbidden. Forbidden. Oh, I thought it was a honey crisp apple. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And oh, no, I see I never It was even fruit from that. a tree. It was forbidden. <laughs> I think yep. we agree it doesn't Fruit matter. from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right? <laughs> what kind of tree was it? It was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. So, mm. what kind of fruit was it? It was knowledge of good and evil tree fruit. fruit. All right? It wasn't an apple. Um... Even though that's how it's done in, um, you know, sort of in, I don't know, somewhere along the line they picked Sexual. it up in Renaissance artwork. Yeah, it looks pretty. Yeah. It's a nice color. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, and it's shiny. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and, you know, they, they were, um, after, the, after the church outlawed the theater and then decided to bring it back in the church, um, 
you know, they and they were doing these what they call mystery plays, and uh, where they would basically like passion plays and, and things like that, where they'd act out different parts of the Bible. Um, <clears throat> they, you know, if you, if you gotta have a tree there, you gotta hang something from it to be fruit. Apples are cheap and and easy to find and, and stuff like that. And yeah, sorry, we're fresh out of pomegranates, so you know. <laughs> we're, and they're more expensive. Yeah, so let's, we'll just hang some apples from there. Um. All right. So, was the fruit itself evil? No. No. Let's see why it could possibly be. No, it was made by God. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing evil about the fruit itself. So. So then, um, how can so if not how can eating something good produce evil? But why did God create it? Why did bother putting it there? That's what I was going to ask. And that question's right here, Pastor. Yep, right there. Right. So, what's your answer? I think he probably had some use for it, but he never got a chance to do it. I I don't know, but that's my thought. It's an interesting perspective. Anybody else? I just think it was always a test. I think right. about the But he, the scripture says he won't test us above what we can, t uh, no. uh, uh, ward off or uh, avoid. This is true. So so they have done that. They could have stood walked, up to it, but they didn't. They could have walked right oh, by that tree. <laughs> very good. So they could have. Yes. What <clears throat> weak people they were. <laughs> Oh my! Aren't you glad we're so strong? Yeah. You know, you know. I've, there's a. You'll see it on my shelf over there. There's sure, a stack of green like, books. There's four this volumes. Twenty twenty, right? right? <laughs> that's, that's Peeper's Dogmatics. It's our our doctrine books. The fourth one's the Index, but the other three are are, are three semesters worth of, of Christian doctrine. All right. And uh, I think it's the second one is um, the Doctrine of Man. All right, which is like a good chunk of the book. Okay, you start out with like one page on um, on created in God's image and, and all that kind of good happy stuff. The whole rest of the chapter, it's not the doctrine of man; it's the doctrine of sin. <laughs> but it's called the doctrine of man. So like, so really, you know, you look at that. And you go, well, what does the Bible have to say about um, about man? Not well, much. It's, it's it's got a couple little things about about created in God's image and that, but all the rest is all about sin. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's pretty depressing. <laughs> I was really happy to get done with that chapter. <laughs> like, so the tree was there for a test. But you know, here's the thing, right? Let's understand the word test though, um, as as the Bible uses it. All right. So, you know, and I always ask the kids like you look at um, Abraham and Isaac. Why did why did God test Abraham there? Right? Was it and I was like, to see whether he would um, be obedient or not? No, well, didn't God already know? He's God. He knows everything. He didn't have to check and see. All right. But now, if you're making a sword and you heat that sword up. You get it really good and hot, and you hammer out the blade, and you and you, you fold the blade to strengthen it and stuff, and then you plunge it into ice cold water, and then you heat it up, and you hammer it out, and you plunge it into the water, and that removes the impurities from it, and it strengthens the blade. Now, if there's a major flaw in that blade, or if, if there's some major impurities in that blade, um. <clears throat> such that it's not the sort of blade that you're going to want to take into battle and you'd rather find out in advance in that process that blade you're going to plunge that blade into the cold water and it's going to shatter all right now the analogy falls a little short because they were pure to begin with okay and god made them that way right. pure but at the same time the why why is a blade tested the testing is not to see if it's going to shatter the testing is to strengthen it because through that process in a fallen world it shatters sometimes okay but um but in the the process it strengthens the blade if you don't do that to the blade it's not going to be strong enough to hold up in battle 
right? Mm -hmm. And and so the testing means to strengthen, right? And so God was testing them there in the sense that it was to strengthen their trust in Him. That you know, in, in a sense, is obedience really obedience if it's never tested, if it's never actually sort of put to the test, um, so that you actually have to actively be obedient. Because otherwise, I mean, that was the one rule that they had. Yeah. You know? Otherwise, you couldn't really say they're obedient if there's absolutely no way, no rules to break. So, but yeah, I mean, pretty pathetic that, and people go, well, that wasn't fair that, that God put that there to, to tempt them or something like that. Well, he said, okay, so there's this one tree I want you to eat from, okay? But here's all these other, you know, fruit. Just this one you don't eat. You know, it's it's sort of like, okay, here's, you know, um, here, here's a buffet. Now, um, the uh, the meatballs, they're bad. They've been sitting too long. Just leave those alone, okay? But you can eat anything else. Help yourself as much as you want, all right? So what kind of an idiot would go, ooh, meatballs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All right. coughs> but they did. All right. Um, so uh, we don't have time to read the whole temptation, um, but you're familiar with <coughs> Jesus' temptation. We have reference here, Luke four. Okay. Um, what was the what was the temptation that Jesus was given? What was the, the first temptation? Anybody off the top of your head? When the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness. Uh, the first one. Yep. Was that the one to? Rule the nope. world. Okay, nope. I don't remember. After that. forty days, he was hungry, and the devil came oh, to him and said, "Give him bread." Yep. If you're the son of God, if you're like God, right, turn the stone into bread. Mm. Right. So what happens? Here comes the devil with his temptation, and he goes, "Hey, it worked one time. I came along and said, hey, you know, if you're gonna be like God. Just eat this." And Jesus could have eaten. It. Could have turned it into. He could have. He's gone. Mm -hmm. And then we'd start all over again. Yeah. <laughs> then we'd really be in trouble. Cause, <laughs> man, if the Son of God fails, then <laughs> that's, that's, you've yeah. got nowhere to go from there. That's true. <laughs> right. So, um, but yeah, so the devil comes along to Jesus with the same exact temptation. But the difference is, Jesus is the new Adam. And he succeeded where, where the first Adam and he failed. So, but interesting, the, the devil used the same exact temptation. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, in Romans 5 and elsewhere, Adam gets blamed for the original sin. Why? Why not Eve? Everybody else says the Bible's so sexist, right? But Adam's the one that gets blamed for Eve's sin. They say, well, it's sexist because it, it nails Eve with the first sin. Well, no, actually, it nails Adam with it, even though Eve's the one that did it. Probably so. because, like we talked about before, God, as far as we know, spoke directly to him about this. And he obviously didn't teach Eve well enough, so he failed. Yeah. Adam wasn't doing his job. If he had been doing his job, taking care of Eve, and, and providing for her, and, and, and doing what he needed to do, then this wouldn't have happened. And where was he? Right. When the serpent was there. Yeah. And where was Adam? What was he doing? You know, there's a reason that when Jesus sends the disciples out, he sends them out in twos. Right? And and when Adam's alone in the garden, God says, it's not good that man be alone. Guess what? It's not woman. It's not good that woman be alone either. <clears throat> right? Yes. Because we take care of each other. <clears throat> yes. And, um, and when temptation comes along, it's our responsibility to... Um, to, to help each other avoid the temptation. God created a serpent, correct? God created a serpent. All right. Um, <clears throat> which, well, I guess we don't specifically have that question. All right. So the serpent, God created the serpent, and then there's this, um, all right, so this was, this was the devil. Okay. Um, was this, 
the devil who just took the form of a serpent did the devil possess the serpent why did Eve not go whoa snakes talk um. <laughs> <laughs> well evidently the snake was standing up right because and later he said you're gonna go on your belly oh right right, right. yep so there's this there's this question about that yeah uh, it's a great um, you know the BC comic there's this there's these two snakes and one has two little legs mm -hmm. and the other one is is crawling along the ground and the one with the two legs says hey how's adam and the other <laughs> goes oh knock it off <laughs> <laughs> all right so so that's a whole other question is was there um did uh did did snakes originally have legs and and now all of a sudden they don't anymore it sounds like it it does kind of sound like it, um, but I, I, you know, I, I really, I think that it's more symbolic. Oh no, <laughs> I don't agree. Um, Sorry. Because I think that the curse should be more on the on the devil um, than on the the thing, the form that he took. Um, now, it, it could be that before that, snakes did, and, and God did that as a reminder to us, right? But the point is that the devil's going to be subservient. Um, which which leads to verse 15, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> running out of time. And we got to make sure that we get to that one. <laughs> so, in fact, tell you what, let's jump ahead because I really want to make sure that we... Okay, then um, I have a question. But the, I'm sorry, go ahead with your question, then we'll do verse 15. All right. It's fine. It just, everything kind of got all in there nebulous all of a sudden. But, so... It was d the devil who was talking to Eve and was tempting her yes. and was standing there. Yeah. And the devil and the word serpent are synonymous. Um, they're not synonymous, <laughs> okay. but in the, uh, I think it's in Revelation, it talks about him being the serpent of old. Okay. Um, and it says, who is the devil? So it's sort of, yeah, we don't really get that from the Old Testament. But it's clarified in the New Testament. Oh, yeah, in case there was any question, the serpent, yeah, that was the devil. Which is a snake, or the serpent is a word meaning devil and is not a no, snake. No, it's just a snake. Okay. So, but but snake is used as a, um, as a sort of representation of evil. Um, but there's so many snakes, and there's only one devil. I don't... That so, all of a sudden that just went boom. It's confused me. Right, right. So did you know? Was there? Um, and and some would argue that well maybe at this time there was only one species of snake and they branched out after that, or um, or other people would say not. You know this was just it took the form of a particular okay. kind of snake. Did you say though it? God cursed the snake and you didn't feel he should have done that. I mean. You didn't. Not that you didn't feel he shouldn't have done it, but it wasn't the snake's fault. He was doing the devil's work. Is that what you said? All right. There's lots of different perspectives on this. My perspective is that the devil either took the form of a snake or else possessed the body of a snake. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. And and used that to to speak to the woman. All right. And then um, then God cursed the devil. Whether, whether snakes before that had legs or not, I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. I and, I, and, and ultimately, I don't think that that is really an important question. Not that it's a bad question. Um, but I think the important thing here is that God cursed the devil for what he had done. Not necessarily that he cursed, um, you know, snakes. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's jump ahead to this last um, question. What does chapter 3, verse 15 refer to? Excuse me. I will put enmity. All right, so first of all, it's God's talking. He's the I. I is God, all right? And who is he talking to? This, uh, the serpent? Yep, the serpent. So, or the devil. Okay. I will put enmity, hatred, between you, the devil, and the woman, 
between the devil's offspring, or this literally his seed, is what he produces, um, and hers, her what she produces, right? He will crush he, being the offspring of the woman, will crush the devil's head, and the devil will strike his heel will strike the heel of the offspring of the woman. Well, I've heard this before. It's Christ. Yeah. I, I wouldn't necessarily just figure it out, but I have seen it. All right. So we have... Here's... This is... I love this because this is how God responds to sin. The first sin, all right, and God says, oh, this is not a good thing. There's going to be some major consequences that be, happen because of this. But... Here's the deal, right? <clears throat> you've got the devil, you've got the woman, and you've got the woman's offspring. Which, interesting, offspring of a woman, no reference to human father here, just offspring of a woman. Okay. And the devil, or the this offspring of the woman, is going to crush the devil's head, destroy his power. But at the same time, the devil is going to strike his heel. Right? Which, in fact, he did with a nail. Wow, that's an awful lot in one little sentence. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Holy I mean, cow. There's a lot crammed in there, but yeah, you have to kind of pick it apart. <clears throat> yeah. Um, because, wow. like, what's all that? But, but what do you got there? That means that here you've got a prediction of Jesus' crucifixion, right down to the, you know, and he references the heel, and, um, well, he doesn't specifically mention, and his hands, and his side, you know. But the point is, is that you know you sort of get this image of of him stepping on the devil's head, and and in in the process the devil bites him in the heel. And so that's why it doesn't mention the hands, all right? You got this imagery, but it's this one who is born of the woman. And and you know and the thing is, everywhere, in when anytime you're talking about sort of lineages or anything like that, you always talk about the father you know, Lenny just passed down through the father. Here's you got the one born of the woman. And so, um and so it's the specific reference to someone who's born of a woman and no reference to a human father. And um and it's through him being wounded, specifically in his foot, that um that the devil's power will be destroyed. So God responds by predicting the crucifixion of and that's at the, right at the beginning, huh? Yeah. Already. It's already there. It's already got the solution. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that a miracle? Isn't that cool? Yeah. You know, and so you know, people say, Why do you believe that um that the Bible's the word of God? Because of stuff like this. And this is just one example. But it's all right there. Right? And um so you oh well that's just coincidence. And a pretty good coincidence there. Right? Um, and and it's and this is what the you know, it, if you want to chalk that up to coincidence, you gotta keep in mind that the the whole rest of the Bible hinges on really on this right here. Man sins, God sends someone to save us from that sin. Mm. It's a repeating theme throughout the whole Bible. But it already happens right here. And so so also just this whole idea of how does God respond to sin? He hates it, but he still saves us from it. And he saves us from it. He doesn't make us save ourselves. Which, real quick, um, I just want to hit on this other stuff about... Um, all right, Adam and Eve sin. They make clothes out of fig leaves for themselves. All right? Did that work? Did evidently not. No, it didn't. Why not? They did it themselves. Exactly. It's not because God doesn't like um, plant fibers. Okay? <laughs> it's because you can't cover your own sin. The, the work of man's hands. Because, you know, Adam and Eve ate the fruit. Did they did they learn what knowledge and good and evil... Uh, did, or did they gain knowledge of good and evil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they knew that they were evil. They have first-hand knowledge, right? 
And so they were ashamed. And so they tried to cover up their sin. But you can't cover up your own sin. Right? And um, so then... Um, well, I don't have it here, but what? How did they actually get covered up? I'm not telling. It's a secret. <laughs> nope, it's right there in uh, verse twenty-one. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. That's what I was looking for. I see it now. Okay. Where do you get skin from? He sacrificed an animal. Yes. Probably a lamb. I'm thinking. You you, you almost figure, huh? All right. <laughs> God clothed them through the shedding of blood. God covered their sin. Right? What does God do for us? He covers our sin by shedding blood. But for us, he shed his own blood. Um, oh, so to hit Bud's question about God being wandering around in the garden, all right? And so he says, Adam, and you know, Adam, where are you? Did he know? Why did he ask? Why didn't he just, you know, kind of sneak up on Adam and Eve while they're hiding and go, boo! boo. <laughs> like your fig leaf. Because yeah. they were still sewing and they would have poked him. <laughs> <laughs> right? So why did he ask him, where are you? He really meant, what have you done? Okay. All right. I see this as God saying, all right, confess your sin. So that, because then he goes... They go, oh, well, we're naked, so we're hiding. All right, uh, let's try Who this again. Who told you you were naked? <laughs> right. God's fishing for a confession here <laughs> because he wants us to confess our sin, to acknowledge our sin. Right? They, they, we still fail because then, well, Man. this woman you gave me, God, it's your fault. They kind of went around and around, didn't they? And she goes, it's the serpent that you created there, God. This is your fault. This is not, you can't lay this on me. Right? We're really good at passing the buck. Uh -huh. We've, you know, we have it in, in all these thousands of years, we haven't come very far. Uh -uh. <laughs> and uh, so... Um, Wow, you got a lot more into that than I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you walk in the house and say, Harriet, where are you? <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. But he already knew where they were. Yeah. He's got. I know. Yeah. Right? That's what I'm wondering. That's why I ask you, is that a common thing that they see him all the time, but we well, didn't see you know, him. You know, yeah, and we don't know exactly how that worked. Um, you know, did God sort of take human form? We know that he didn't become a human like he did um in mary's womb right um but uh you know that was a very uh, separate special thing but you know we see also god wrestles with jacob mm -hmm. well i was right. just wondering if they if it was a common occurrence that they ran across him or mm -hmm. it only happened because of what they had done you know it seems to be that they did have that sort of relationship they could just talk to each other face to face that mm -hmm. god would would somehow take on a um, some court, sort of human form, um, and you know, and he also did that with um, with Abraham. There's mm -hmm. different times in the Old Testament where he does take on human form, and, and a lot of people point to well, Melchizedek mm -hmm. as being um, another uh, what we call, I believe, the term is theophany, uh, God revealing Himself. Oh, I don't know. I could be using that word wrong. Um, my Latin's kind of lousy. Um, <clears throat> All right, what does sin do to Adam and Eve's relationship? All right, jumping back to um, to chapter two. All right, oh, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and oh, she's great, and oh, isn't she wonderful? And God comes along and says, Adam, what did you do? It's the woman. <laughs> Wait a minute. Whatever happened to bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and you know. And the only one for me, and, and my perfect helper, and, and you know, like all of a sudden, that's all out the window. The honeymoon's over. The honeymoon's over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And how sad is that? And you know, and the thing is, the Book of Genesis, the whole Bible, but the, the Book of Genesis, it's all about relationships. God's relationship with man, the man destroys. God creates Eve for Adam to have this great relationship. Adam throws it out at the first sign of trouble. 
you know he throws out his relationship with um just a interesting and, and we need to wrap this up but the um the mormon view of this is that eve eats the fruit adam comes along and says eve god said we're supposed to be fruitful and multiply and now he's going to throw you out of the garden i'm going to be in the garden we can't be fruitful and multiply and so therefore now i'm going to have to eat the apple so that or the fruit um so that i get kicked out of the garden too so that we can be fruitful and multiply they call it adam's righteous sacrifice they found all that <clears throat> isn't that great because then when adam says it was this woman you gave me god you know in in their way of seeing it god goes yep <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> so uh, yeah yeah they're nothing but trouble sometimes <laughs> <laughs> Why would they want seven wives? Such a on a yeah. Yeah. One's bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> you might have eaten seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, I guess the main thing that the the most important thing to draw from um, from Genesis three is that you know we had this great relationship, we broke it, God fixed it. He had it all figured out. When when we messed up, God said, it's all right, I've got the solution already. I knew you were going to do it anyway. So. Yeah. yeah, and so I, I, I came up with a solution in advance. So I'm, you know, they didn't catch God by surprise where all of a sudden God's going, oh, no! <laughs> well, <laughs> now what am I going to do? Now what am I going to do? No. Oh, don't going, start over. Yeah. Yeah. God, God went, and now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is one of those things that you it's very hard to understand, and so I don't think about it all that. He made us, he knew about it, he made us, but why? And if he knew, why didn't he? Right, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Till heaven. Right. Then it's a, it's an understand. asking when you get there question. Yeah, yeah. It's what I like to call theological gum. You can chew on it and chew on it and chew on it, and you're just yeah. never going to totally be able to swallow it. All right. <clears throat> Let's close the prayer. Heavenly Father, we are sinners, no question about it, and yet you still love us. You still sent your Son to die for us and to forgive our sins, and you love us and you persevere with us through all of the times that we turn away from you. You constantly call us back to you, and, and, and when you turn us around so that we can see your love, you show us your love, mm -hmm. and, and when we rejoice in that love, mm -hmm. you tell us, well done. That doesn't make any sense to us, but we sure are glad that that's the way you are. Be with us and help us to see that love and may it affect everything that we think, say, and do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.